Well, thank you for joining us once again. We have cash out goes with the shock. Today is the mega jackpot. And with the mega jackpot, it means that you have to choose option eight. So when you choose option eight, please make sure that you increase the number of tickets that you have. I want to do a draw after the big issues, but it will depend on how all of us are able to participate and then get things running for us, okay? Let's um, make cash money cookie, who is uh, convalescing or recovery at home, very happy, so that uh, she'll come and continue her good work. But in the meantime, please make sure that as many times as possible, you are able to take part in this mega jackpot. And then also, when you do that, please know that we're always happy that you join. But in the meantime, a number of you have joined us this morning. We're just looking at the, um, the following the release into the public domain of the judgment by the Supreme Court on that vac vacated seat, so to speak, ruling by the Speaker and what the implications there are. And right now we have the, 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 the reasons that have been adduced by the judges in that 5-2 ruling, the majority 5 and then the minority 2. And subsequently, when you take a read of it, very interesting there, uh, a number of, um, well, things that have been noticed so far by those who have studied the law. Let me say good morning to you, uh, Michael Che. Good morning. You're joining us from the UK. Great guy. Uh, Chrissy Mensah from, the, from New York. Thank you for joining us. Michael Che is in the UK. Uh, Barnabas, uh, you've joined us as well. Amidou Bright, Ibrahim, Awudu, I see you. And then also Don um, Wazi, Z Zilis Duane. You said I shouldn't call it Zilis Duane. Zilis Duane from the UK. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're well. And Kwikweron joining us from the Eastern Region. Uh, I have lawyer Pia Dankwa, who is in the studio. Good morning to you. Good morning. And then also lawyer Amaliba. He goes by the first name Abraham, father of many nations. How are you? I'm good. I'm okay. I'm fine. Mm, mm, mm. And then lawyer Kwame Jantwa. Of Ajantua. How are you? I'm fine. I'm 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 happy the good Lord has given us another day. No, given me another year. It's Today's my, your birthday. It's my birthday tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Yes. Happy birthday to you. you. It's my sixty seventh birthday tomorrow. You'll be sixty seven. You? Yes. Wow. Please give him a close up, let me see. <laughs> Why? Yes, Fanta, you look handsome. God is good. Your, your, who did you who do you um resemble? Is it your father or your mom? Both. Both. The very uh, beautiful and handsome yeah. parents you have. So your father and mother were twins? No, they weren't twins. <laughs> they got together. Mm. Uh, so, um, <laughs> Nanea Chimpinjantua yes. has a fair skin. It's in the family. My father is fair. Your father is fair. Yes. Where did you pass? Because you My look mother. Very dark. Mm. Okay. But you haven't seen me, what do you call it? Oh, okay. <laughs> so beneath. <laughs> so the, the devil is in the detail. <laughs> Today is a Friday, so um, please, for, for those who have joined us, please share the stream. I already see Kinsley Ofori. Please, all of you, star 439 hash. Today, we're doing a mega jackpot. Over the last four weeks, we've been giving 50,000 Ghana cities out. And today, too, we want to replicate same. We can only do same if you are able to increase the number of tickets and replicate your numbers as many times, tens of times in, 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 in the baskets. It is an electronic basket. It's very electronic, very imaginary. So, so star for three. Now, choose option eight. Please choose option eight. That's the mega jackpot, MG jackpot. And I want to make sure that I do the draw as many times as, as I can at the end of the show. All right? So please, make sure you, you stay with us. I see a number of you as well. So, um, you've... You've read the ruling of Peru State. Let me. Okay, so so we'll just take you through um, the highlights, and it says, well, they hold that upon a true and proper interpretation of Article 971G, the legal element of that provision can be formulated as an MP must vacate his seat if he leaves the party under which he was elected to join another party, or. Uh, goes independent and seeks to remain in parliament under their new political status. Similarly, with regards to H, it says the proper legal element can be formulated as an independent MP must vacate his seat 
if he joins a political party in parliament and seeks to remain in parliament under his new political status. I don't know whether Isiama also falls in this, but maybe for a future, a future as well. Because uh, if you look at the judgment, it, it takes cognizance of why those who have elected these individuals also need to be served in the current term of the parliament that the MP is, is serving. So, let me take this opportunity to wish uh, your lovely viewers a good, a good morning. Uh, wish my big brother, Jantua, uh, happy birthday in advance. Hopefully tomorrow we can, we can have a proper celebration. Always a pleasure to be in the company of my uh, learning senior. Uh, Amaliba, I was one year his junior in the law school. So. Oh, was that so? Yeah, I was uh, only uh, one year. Uh, only one year. He was my senior from as in Legon, and then we went to law school. I think one, one is one year is small. It's not small. Yeah, you are his senior. I didn't know that. Uh, Amaliba is one year my senior. Because you, I call you Akwadanya, because everybody here is, is, has been your senior for most of the times that uh, we've introduced you together, or maybe we've made inferences. But please go ahead. So let me state categorically that. I, as in, we all understand that it's the duty of the, of the courts to say what the law is. And when matters that borders on interpretation arises, essentially what the court is doing is to give a clarification on what the law is concerning uh, the constitutional provision where there is a confusion. And, and so it's, it's essentially that's what the Supreme Court did. Uh, what was it called? Uh, 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 was it on Tuesday? On Tuesday, yes. But having said that, um, I, I think I, I, I need to start by stating my position. My position is that I disagree vehemently with the decision of the of the of the of the Supreme Court. You disagree vehemently. Ve vehemently with and I stand on all forces on all force with the dissenting view. And uh, when you read the 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 ruling of the of the court, you realize that there were two broad issues. As in, there, there were a number of issues. But there were two broad issues. One, the first issue, what is on interpret on, on on the jurisdiction, whether or not the 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 jurisdiction of the Supreme Court had been properly invoked. invoked yes. And on that decision, it was five two. It was it was it was five two. On the other issues, as in on whether on the interpretation to be given to uh, what was called Article ninety seven one G, and then the in granting the reliefs, that one in on under on, on the proper in interpretation of Article ninety seven two. The members have not vacated their seats on that. I think it was unanimous because the two judges, as in uh, 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 Tanko and Lavalis, did not make a pronouncement on those issues. I think we all need to need to uh, need to be clear on that. Now, I think when you read the decision in its entirety, there is a there is a fundamental confusion in the in the in the decision of the of the of the of the majority. Now, Article 28 in page, on page 24, they stated their, one of their reasons for why they felt they had jurisdiction to even detain the matter, in spite of the clear terms of Article 99. Now, with the permission, let me read. Please do. Now, on page 24, it says that, but more important is the need to emphasize that the disputing issue arises solely from what the proper interpretation and application of Article 971 GH is to the fate of the affected MPs mm. filing nominations to contest the next election as independents or on tickets of political parties that they do not currently represent. This suit, the suit essentially hinges on the pure question of law, mm. specifically the proper construction of Article 971 GH and H to establish the legal threshold for triggering its provision without delving into factual disputes regarding seat vacation in parliament which properly lies within the high court's purview mm. under article 99 of the constitution accordingly to the extent that the exclusive preserve to settle a matter of interpretation of article 21 and article 131 and 2 lies with mm. the supreme court it is incumbent on this court to exercise jurisdiction and resolve the interpretation for the application of the high court it is incumbent on this court to exercise jurisdiction and resolve the interpretation for the application for the application of the High Court. Mm. You understand? So, my understanding of this is, is the Supreme Court's job is to simply interpret the meaning of the, of the, of the, of the provision and the dispute. And then, where they have made such interpretation, where they've made such interpretation, it is for the High Court then to make a determination. Now, 
when you go to now having beautifully laid down this principle they then proceeded to give their interpretation of the said of the said article now and indeed you you find their interpretation even in the in their holding and so when you go to page uh, 35 where they said in the end we we reiterate that on the true and proper interpretation article 97 1g only requires that an mp must vacate their seat if they leave their party under which they were elected to join another party or become independent and seek to remain in parliament under their new political status you understand now i agree with the interpretation they give they, they give i think i think it's an interpretation that every, all of us here in, in in our submissions on this issue have alluded to we all we have, we have all said that under a proper interpretation of 90 article 9 97 you must vacate your seat if you leave the party under whose ticket you entered parliament now the question then is in the determination of whether or not you have vacated your seat under the provision of 971 g you need to make a determination whether or not the member the mp whether or not they have left their party that determination needs to be made the determination you need to make it so then it must become an issue that having interpreted the 97 one gene to, to hold that if you leave your party then you must vacate your seat then the question becomes then will become so the four so the three mps who had left their who who who, who, who have attempted or have given an indication that they are going to contest the election as independent have they left their parties whether or not they have left their parties by filing to contest as independent that 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 question is not a question of law that is a question of fact and the question is whether or not the Supreme Court has the jurisdiction to answer that question. It's a question of fact. Whether or not you have left, you see, the question whether or not you are a member of your party is a question of fact. It's a question that the 1992 Constitution won't answer because that will depend on the constitution of the political party. And so that's a question of fact. So in, in, in an ordinary case where you claim that somebody has left the party in court, you'll be, you'll be expected to give evidence and the evidence to that question will be to present the constitution of the party you, you understand and that's why the constitution in this wisdom so that whenever there is a question as to whether or not a seat has been, been is, is vacant having regard to the 97 says that is the high court that's the proper forum to determine that question you, you, you understand is there is that because the supreme court do not have the jurisdiction to determine on that issue of fact, the original jurisdiction, so far as that question is concerned, is lies with the with the with the High Court. But what did they do? Having interpreted, they then went further to make a determination whether or not the MPs concerned have left their parties or not. And then they came to that erroneous conclusion that by they filing their nominations only gave an intention of what they intended to do in the next parliament without addressing the issue whether or not as of today. They have left their their uh, their parties, and that is the confusion in the judgment of the court. Because at the end of the day, like I'm saying, the question whether or not a member has left his party is a question of fact. Now and so, if they had taken the position of the dissenting view, you understand, and restricted themselves to the powers given granted them under Article Two. And article 130 simply interpret you understand simply interpret you understand because like i'm saying they do not have the jurisdiction to go into the factual issues and factual issues then you will be calling for evidence you understand? and that jurisdiction lies with the with the high court. high court and so right now what they've done is that they've given a judgment which pretends serious confusion for our democracy because you know what uh, what is going to happen because of of this what do you think will be the implication? under mpp's constitution it says that if you contest against a candidate sponsored by their party or if you support any candidate against the candidate support uh, uh, was supported by uh, sponsored by by party you automatically cease to be a member of the party indeed we saw what happened to hosanna doye to uh, nana Ohinto. and so now this ruling is saying this uh, judgment is effect is saying that 
if you contest against uh, what's called a, a candidate sponsored by the NPP, and let's say you are you are an NPP member or of any other party, party, party. even though per their constitution you, you cease to be a member of their party, you still be in in uh, you, you still remain in parliament as if you were an MPP member. Is, it, is that, is that, that not true? Is it not true that when you look at the judgment, the Supreme Court, in its considered view, make consider, uh, considerations for the rights of the constituents who elected those individuals, that for them, for the remaining period for which these members should be in parliament, could if they vacate or are made to vacate their seat, be deprived of a member of parliament. And the, it's very important. The Supreme Court itself is saying, they themselves are saying, that in spite of all the reasons they are giving, if you leave, because right now, the law in Canada right now is that per this Supreme Court decision, you don't even need to quote 971, per this Supreme Court rule a decision, the position of the law is that if you leave the party of which you were a member, yeah, so on whose security you, you, uh, you entered parliament, if you leave that party. In fact, uh, uh, it said with justice, his, his lordship, just, it said, you, even went further to say that, per his understanding, if you resign, if you resign from your party, it doesn't matter whether you are going to uh, 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 deprive your constituents of their rep representation, you automatically cease to be an MP. That is what Justice Isedu said. In this judgment, you, 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 you understand? So if Justice Isedu said that, that if you resign, you understand? Is that not whether or not you have resigned? Is that not a matter of fact? Because the constitution does not deal with issues of where you've resigned from your party. It deals with the issue of where you have resigned from parliament. There are two different issues. If you resign from your party, you understand? It's a question of fact, not a question of law. You, 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 you understand? And whether or not a resignation from your party will cause you to leave your party falls within the ambit of the reasons the party have given. Uh, under their constitutions, for what action you, you undertake will, will make you leave their party. You understand? And that's what I'm saying that immediately the Supreme Court, even though they held, having held that they, they had jurisdiction to entertain this matter, went ahead to then give clarification to the extent of their jurisdiction. Okay. As against 19, please let me conclude on this. Mm. You understand? Because they made it clear that when it comes to interpretation, they have the jurisdiction, irrespective of Article 9, what Article 99 is saying. However, they haven't given the interpretation, it then behoves on, on, on the High Court to then apply those interpretations. So having given this clear law in their own, what authority did they then have to then delve into factual issues? Because whether the question is whether or not the MP has left his party, eh? it's not a question of law. It's a question of fact. It's a question that is only the High Court that has the power, the jurisdiction to answer. All right. Um, lawyer Mokobudu also has joined us. Good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. Um, so that said... Um, I just joined you. Yeah, yeah. So, no, no. <laughs> so, uh, Lawyer Maliba, that said, does it... <laughs> All I can say for now uh, is uh, happy birthday in advance. Oh, so you are listening? I watch everything before I get here. <laughs> I'm ready in advance. Thank you. And it's not the only Akwanya me here. Who the Akwanya? It's not the only Akwanya me here. You know, I, I refer to you. That's why. <laughs> and and good morning to my my learned friend, okay. Mr. Maliba, and yourself. Yeah, okay. Okay. For now. Mm. Yes. Lawyer uh, Maliba, having gone by the submission that has been made, and then also those out there in the public domain with the Supreme Court saying that it is clothed with the jurisdiction to hear the substantive matter, then if there's the need to invoke the powers of the High Court, as stipulated in Article 99, in relation to a member of parliament having vacated his or her seat, then it means that that action could be taken henceforth. Is that not the case? I don't get the import of your question. Uh, uh, can you rephrase? So, 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 so basically, in this judgment, they say that there is no determination that if you are going to contest the next election on the ticket of another party or as an independent onto another party or a party to an independent candidate in the next election, you cannot be seen to be vacating your seat in the current parliament you're serving. Yeah. And I'm saying, in order 
for that action to be invoked in relation to Article 99, who has that power to do that? Who can go to the High Court and say that this gentleman has taken this action as a result of that, per Article 99, I want you as a High Court to do what is needful? So that's how confusing the Supreme Court ruling is. The more I read the judgment, the more I became embarrassed. What I noticed is that the Supreme Court sought to rewrite the Constitution under the guise of interpretation. And they have no such jurisdiction. They have no jurisdiction to rewrite the Constitution as they purported to have done the last time that this matter was in court or paid the ruling. Why? The Supreme Court, in my view, acted unconstitutionally. How can it? It can. Because the Supreme Court itself is under the Constitution. And the Supreme Court cannot give an interpretation which is not born out of the Constitution. So when the Supreme Court gives an interpretation that is not born out of the Constitution, that is unconstitutional. And I've heard the Attorney General say that the law is what the Supreme Court says it is. You heard him say that. And I cringed. The law is what the Supreme Court says it is if it is born out or is envisaged by the Constitution. The Supreme Court is not heard in the Constitution. So today, there is no way if the judges in the Supreme Court, all of them sleep and wake up and say that we want to make a ruling that all men in Ghana are women and women in Ghana are men. Eh? And they agree at the, at the conclave and then interpret the Constitution, a portion of it or a provision of it and say, so it is. That cannot happen. In other words, the Supreme Court cannot, on its own, decide that, even though the words are clear, we will say it is like this. I don't know what they are following me. The Supreme Court has no such power. They have no such power. The Supreme Court, I have third time in our number, and people, you see, people, people, we have made it look, and the Attorney General has also helped in that, we have made it look like the Supreme Court can say what it wants. Never. The Supreme Court itself is the creation of this Constitution. And so it's under it. First and foremost, was there even an issue of interpretation? There wasn't. The words are very clear. But they went ahead to interpret and said that the fact that you pick a nomination form does not mean that you are joining a political party. And I asked myself, you are joining a political party different from the vehicle that brought you in. And I asked myself, can I, who is known to be an NDC, just walk into the MPP, MPP uh, constituency office and pick a form and say, I'm going to contest for MPP candidate? Can I just do that? Before you pick the form, you must have first joined them. I'm saying this again. Before you pick a form and even go for nomination, you must have first satisfied the conditions of being a member of the party before you can pick the form. So, uh, the, let's take the speaker, the deputy speaker. Isiyama. Isiyama was independent. Now going. Now going for party. Party, yes. What it simply means is that the MPP have satisfied themselves that he's now their member. That's how come he can pick a form. And what's the Supreme Court saying? That even when you file your nomination, even when you file your nomination, it doesn't mean that you have crossed carpet. How is that possible? How is that possible? This is a program, ordinary guys are listening. So me, I don't like quoting article this, article this. You like to go ordinary? Ordinary. Okay. So let me just refer you then 
Because despite the existence of the provisions in the MPP's constitution, which makes it automatic and very clear, yeah. that if you take certain actions, best you want to, then you will forfeit your membership, thereby meaning that ideally you shouldn't be representing the same party in parliament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you come to the national constitution, in this judgment, the Supreme Court says in its own estimation mm -hmm. that there's no doubt that rival meanings have been placed on the provisions of Article 97 1G and H of the 1992 Constitution by the Speaker's statement on the floor of Parliament and the plaintiff thereby displacing all lingering doubts that this is a proper case for invoking the original interpretative jurisdiction of the Supreme Court as so established. That clearly means that in the mind of the Supreme Court, they feel this is in their domain. I disagree with them because we all did interpretation at the law school, including them. You give words their ordinary meaning first. Give words their ordinary meaning first. The meaning on the street of Accra. Give those words that meaning first. And if it leads to absurdity, then you can now bring in a secondary meaning. Didn't we do all this in the law school? Give these words that you have read, give them their other meanings, and let's see whether they'll be absurdity. Shadrach, put Article huh? 97. Gi you put them, read it. Put them on the screen put so it. that everybody will see. And we we'll see whether it will lead to absurdity. You don't just jump into the middle and then start saying that you want to interpret. For what reason? Those words, and I said, and Justice Tanko has also reiterated that point, this judgment will not stand the test of time. And you know what they have done? They have effectively struck down Article 97. Article 97, the question is, when will it ever be relevant the way they have done it? When will we ever, eh? when will we ever say that per Article 97, a minister, eh, a member of parliament has crossed carpet? They have effectively done away with it. They've made it useless. They've rather given it a meaning. They deem fit. And I'm saying that let's follow their meaning. When we follow their meaning, when will this article ever be invoked? It will never happen. It will never happen. See, I was here the last time, and I asked the question, what did the speaker do for the writ to be filed against him? And it is true. The majority side admitted that the writ was filed on the 15th, speaker's action was on the 17th, so the writ preceded the speaker's action. So what are you calling on the speaker, what are you calling on, the, on parliament, uh, on the uh, Supreme Court to do? There was nothing before the, the Supreme Court. And what was the reason for the writ on the 15th? Because what Afanyo Maki is seeking to say is that, the speaker's pronouncement must be declared null and void. So Under 15, the speaker didn't make any pronouncement for God's sake. So you're saying what? He was only acting on speculation on a campaign platform? Supreme Court doesn't take speculations. So what are you saying? I'm saying that there was no course of action. A course of action has not arisen. See how they... They try to meander their way out of it. There was no cause of action. Now, one would have expected that now that the speaker had made a pronouncement on the 17th, per the Supreme Court rules, you can amend your rate. One would have expected them to amend their rate to reflect the complaint they have. They didn't amend their rate. So what was the Supreme Court going to determine when speaker had not yet, as it were, spoken. That's another flaw. Another flaw. You see? So there are a lot of flaws in this judgment, and it is not helpful to our democracy. And I tend to agree with my senior judge, Shikata, that who the tasks are not only carried out 
by men in uniform, <laughs> but they can also be carried out mm -hmm. by men and women in wigs and gowns. And it's cool. You know? So, you look at all these things, then you begin to think that the, 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 the building blocks of our democracy are being chipped away gradually, 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 and at the end of the day, we will not have a democracy. This is not how I expected the Supreme Court to conduct itself. And I agree with Justice Tanko that a future Supreme Court uh, differently composed would overturn this. I see. Very interesting. Lawyer Mako at the end of the day, uh, practical lessons that we can all learn from this, and then making those deductions from this judgment also means that we've come to a position where um, a member of parliament could take an action to stand on the tickets of another party or as an independent candidate whilst in the present parliament and will be made to represent his party irrespective of whether he's competing against them or not or whether his party's own constitution goes against his actions he's taken. Is that right? Thank you very much, and thank you to your viewers. Good morning to your viewers and listeners. Um, I tend to want to pick something from what my brother uh, Maliba said, which is to simplify the issues for our viewers and listeners. And drawing from that, I want to latch on to this analogy that if you're uh, uh, employed and you serve your letter of resignation to take effect three months from that time, does it take effect from then, there and then, that you serve your resignation? It doesn't. Obviously, your boss will be knowing that this person is not something we should be planning ahead with. I don't understand. Oh. When it's stated in the code of conduct that when I take an action, I forfeit my employment status. Yes, but in your, your, in your employment status, it is in lieu of your salary, isn't it? So you normally have to give them ample time for which it will take effect. If you don't do so, you miss your salary. Is that not so? And you're supposed to give them that period for them to also look for replacement. Is that not so? So you always give them prior notice that from this date onwards, I cease to be. What if, an, an, an what if it's an action that's taken that um, amounts to you being summarily dismissed? That's a different thing. No, it cannot be. There's, because in the MPP constitution, wait, 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 there's wait, an automatic wait, 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 dismissal, wait, wait, so to wait, speak. Wait, if we have wait, to wait, say wait, this wait, wait, wait. I'm giving you an if analogy. We have to, if we have to say your same and, analogy and, is put ten minutes. Yeah, but, yeah, but so in that analogy. Is it the case that what they did was to commence there and then? And my brother gave an example of Hobson Adoya and Co. What these people did was to say that in this coming election, we are standing on either going independent or standing on this ticket. But that's what we're talking about. Exactly. It doesn't mean that they were saying that here and now. I have stopped. I don't, I'm no more a member of parliament. That's not, what they, that's not what they said, is it? Are you saying... In the, and I'm giving you another an, an, an analogy. La, la hey, let me I, give you another analogy. Are you, are you saying listen, listen, that uh, Alan uh, Sherman uh, thing... No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, Alan you Sherman... allow everyone to talk. Yes, yes. So let me yes. talk. No, no, okay, so... Let me talk. Are you saying that... No, let me talk. I, I haven't no, finished. No, let me lo, talk. Lo, lawyer, don't just, do just, this. No, okay. Don't do this. Don't, let, don't do it. Don't let, do it. Let me make this... No, no, no. Don't do Don't do it, please. This is the only time I'm getting angry on this show. That's don't fine. do it. That's fine. Go ahead. You allow everyone to make their point. Okay, okay. You won't allow me to Go make ahead. their point. Okay. What, why, why am I here? Go ahead. Please. In the same version, when you file for a divorce, that is formal going to court. Does that divorce, because you have served it on your husband or wife, take effect from that moment in time? Would you not allow the court to go through the due process, then the court to pronounce on that? 
Is that not what happens? Why is it that for political purposes, we are not reading other meanings into this to say that now the Supreme Court judgment, we are ashamed of it. Copious, copious legal principles being alluded, alluded to here. We are not saying we are even ashamed of it. And that there's a coup d'etat that can be done by men in suit. The first coup d'etat in this instance that was done was done by another man in suit in another uh, uh, house, which is parliament. And that we were happy with that. What did they do? For, for you take a decision that changes the, the, how parliament is constituted, the business that could be done. And the Supreme Court takes steps to solve that problem. We can decide not to be happy with that or agree with that. Everyone is allowed to do that. In fact, when we go back to our classrooms, it is in discussions, commentaries, articles, so on and so forth, that has been written on a judgment like this, that we will teach. And there's no denial of the fact that there are dissenting views or minority decisions that eventually becomes majority decisions, eventually. Lord Justice Denning in UK kept it. It was so much so that he was descending. Eventually, his position now becomes what is adopted by the same court. He eventually, differently constituted, years later. So there's no denying of that fact. Okay? But for now, this decision simplifies the issues, solves the problems, and we cannot go further. We cannot say that the persons who said that in the coming election, I am going to stand on this ticket, has definitely now become an MP of that party. The people haven't even exercised their vote yet. Is it, comp is, it, is it automatic that the moment you now see I'm crossing over to this side, you are now an MP in this current parliament? And that was the main issue. So we are, whilst we are breaking it down, let's break it down for everyone to understand, okay, that we're dealing with the eighth parliament. The court was of the view that, was of the view that these individuals in the eighth parliament are saying that we belong here. They haven't resigned. They're saying that in the coming election, we will stand differently. It doesn't even make them an MP in the coming uh, parliament because the parliament, the coming uh, parliament doesn't even exist. They still have to submit themselves to the constituency for the constituency to have a say. There are instances where People will even file their nomination in the same party, and the constituency will change it. There are several people who have lost elections, and it's been changed. You see? So let's not... Can I ask a question now? <laughs> Can I ask a question? You're behaving as if now I have, I have, I have become... Uh, can I ask a question? I <laughs> ask a question. Sorry okay. for, for flying. So, respectfully, when we have the word, the wedding, in Article 97.1, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. Mm -hmm. Then you go to G, it says, if he leaves the party of which he was a member. Mm -hmm. So the first instance you were, the constitution said, if you were, if, if, if he vacates a, 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 from a party where he was, and, and subsequently, decides to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent. Mm -hmm. do, what do you think the framers of the constitutions, the constitution we're alluding to, were okay. they talking about a future parliament or a current parliament? Okay. Were they so, thinking the member of parliament was already or still a member of his party, even though they made reference was a member of at the time of his election? Okay, so thank you again. Let's look at Article 93 to begin with. 93 says that there shall be a parliament, a parliament in Ghana, which shall consist of not less than 140 elected members. Two, subject to the provisions of this constitution, the legislative, the legislative power of Ghana shall be vested in parliament and shall be exercised in accordance with this constitution. Now, so it's not that another view which has been trumpeted that they are masters of their own and whatnot. Parliamentary power, which is vested in parliament, has to be exercised subject to the provisions of this constitution. Now let's go into the question you gave. 
a member of parliament shall vacate his seat. That means that he shall vacate his seat. It's not that someone has to pronounce on whether he should vacate his seat or not. If that is supposed to happen, that power now goes to Article 99, where a court, public constitution, will be a high court, based on the fact, will now pronounce that that seat has become vacant. Now, if he crosses over, and that's the whole issue. You see, this was put in a primarily or in a, in, 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 in a very, to a very large extent under Parliament uh, in Gromer's time and in uh, Dr. Lehman's time, all right? Where you've, you have voted for, you enter, and then you cross the days. Cross, that's why you see crossing. You see, you cross the days. The days is what the, 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 the speaker comes when he's, he, he comes uh, and he follows that and he's put there. Then Parliament is now in session. Then you cross the days. Then you have crossed carpet, okay? Now, because he himself doesn't see what he has done as having crossed carpet then, he did not vacate his seat. It is futuristic. So, if you, a member, and, and, and there's a case in court, so when you say that the Supreme Court has not pronounced on this, there's a case in the High Court filed by Manede, my little good friend, uh, Samuel Kwakwado. I don't know whether he's going to continue with the case or not, but it's, it's, in, it's in the High Court. All right. If they feel that by their act, they have vacated, the court will pronounce on that. But for the Supreme Court, you see, a lot of decisions and authorities stated in it says that they must bring finality to a matter before then. They are allowed to take judicial notice of events. The, 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 their main purpose in this, because it's a constitutional interpretation, is to bring finality to a matter. We are saying, by the judgment, okay, like the, their lordships have said, by the judgment, five to two, that the actions they took are futuristic. And that you, 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 you cross to the other side, okay, in a particular parliament, when they have said that, they haven't said that they have crossed here and now. They are saying that they are crossing in the parliament which is about to come. And that is even hinge on whether or not they will be voted for. And, I, and I've, I've met all the parliamentarians. All of them are super confident that they will be voted for. So fine. And, and you need that so that you can project this confidence to your electorate. It is for your electorate to decide whether we are sending you back. If we are sending you back, this constituency, all right, well, majority confident. of us belong to either NDC or NPP. Okay. So if you are sending you back to represent us, and you are now speaking with this voice, when we want you to speak with that voice, are we sending you back? That lies with the, with the constituency. Okay. So does it mean that the MPP in putting that in their constitution and even the actions taken by Professor Aaron Michael Quay were all in error? You see, I've already commented on Professor Michael Quay's uh, issue. So let's All right? I've, I've already commented on that. I'm saying that at that time, their standing orders gave him the power to do that. What about the, the renewed standing orders does not allow the speaker to do that. Okay. Now, the MPP are still standing together with at least Cynthia Morrison in the public uh, engagement by the majority leader. You do not see her standing next yeah. to, 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 to him. I don't Is understand. it not? Does the MPP have a candidate in the constituency where she is going independent? The, if she says she's going independent, all right. It's not she the, says, so there's notice of poll. Precisely. Okay. If that's the case. And I'm asking you, yes. you are a key member, you are part of the legal committee. Directory, team, exactly. Directory. Yes. Does the MPP have a candidate in the next election to be convened on December 7, for which we already have notice of polls? being issued by the Electoral Commission for the same constituency, Cynthia Morrison, who is the current MP, but going dependent in that election. Right. So, your question purports to say that we should take a step. No, no, no. To, I ask you, that's a, a, that's a purpose, my question is about that, a candidate. Precisely. But your question purports to say that we should definitely take a step we took against uh, the current second deputy speaker and 
uh, um, 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 what, are what are your guys' names, please? Uh, Hosin and uh, the publicity for all of us are part. Get out 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 Okay, then I'm informing inform you. Please listen to my question you. again. We, as a party, have not taken that step against Cynthia Morrison and Co. We are still engaging them. No. And so we you think... Not, you answered in, my question. You haven't answered the, my question. In the, in the decision Does that the MPP have Professor a candidate? Gray, in the decision that... Does the MPP have Professor a candidate? Took, okay. There was a letter okay. from the party to him that this person is no longer right. a member of our party. Right. That has not happened here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> As a great lawyer. Uh, again, um, does the MPP have a candidate in the constituency? I have sold you the answer. All right. <laughs> well, come down to you. you um, so, 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 so there's, a, there's an interesting message that comes from Ansar. And uh, uh, Ansar says, I have a comment. Um, by, by the Supreme by the Supreme Court ruling, does it mean a sitting MPP MP can go round and campaign against Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia and then the MPP and then and then the MPP's candidate and still insist that he or she is an MPP member and an MPP will have no right to punish the person or <laughs> vote against the, the person or see, get right angry or get angry for campaigning against the party? Amid you know, this message, what do you, you, know, you know, how you do we, how, you know, you know, no, no, you know, but you refuse to you answer, know, no, I've answered it. as, as, we my, have a right. as my good friend, was, an as my good friend was uh, giving his commentary, what the person was saying went through my mind, but let me ask a question, is there no implied intention mm. by the person's action? And is implied intention not considered by courts and even within the Constitution? And when you look at courts, in, cons in considering implied intention, they interpret ambiguous provisions, addressing constitutional gaps or silences. Is that not silent? Silences? Resolving conflicts between provisions and ensuring consistency with constitutional values. There is an implied intention by the individual. So let me ask from the, what do you call it you've just read? If mm. my good friend who is MPP is in parliament and he decides with this particular sitting he decides and announces to the whole world, I no more believe in the tenants of the MPP I represent in Parliament. In fact, I, I don't think some of the things they do is even right. So in the next Parliament, I'm going to another political party. Eh? What do you think the MPP will do? According to their own constitution. They said they reserve the right would, to take an action. Would they, would they not say the man, he doesn't believe in us anymore. He's not with us anymore. He's deciding to go to another party. So what is he doing here? What, would they not write a letter to the speaker, eh, according to their constitution, that the man is no more a member of our party? Will he not have crossed carpet then? Look. Where I stand, eh, I stand with the judges who dissented. Why do, why do I say that? I feel the Supreme Court, yes, has the right hmm, to interpret any ambiguity or unclearness where the Constitution is concerned. Once you do that, especially in this case, and I've heard the MPP people talk about 99, eh? 
the Supreme Court should have redirected the case back to 99. To the High Court. To be able to determine whether the individual had crossed carpet. Because that's what the Constitution says. And it is in their bosom to redirect it back to 99. They should have instructed that because we have an article in the Constitution that talks about someone leaving their party or not, we are redirecting it. It should go to the Supreme Court and it should go to the High Court. And if the High Court also misinterprets the law, we would come in and reinterpret it and clear it. Did that happen? And it's created a lot of confusion. A lot of confusion. But, you see, the good thing, eh? The good thing is that this is happening at the tail end of the term of parliament and of the governance process. Meaning what? Are we not at the tail end? Yes, meaning what? Eh? In terms of, can you imagine if this happened way earlier? Like usually the two years that they uh, tend to do uh, the mid-term. Uh, do you know the kind of confusion it would have brought? Because there's, a, there's, a, there's a, please, when you were talking, I was quiet. Well, no, I'm not interrupting. Yeah, you're interrupting no, me. You are. The Supreme Court, no, no, so eh? the, the Supreme Court, at the present moment. Ah, so, so practically, you are saying that just in case, let's say the new parliament comes 2024, uh, 2025. Yes. Then usually the parties in opposition, yeah. they usually elect their officers midterm, and by the end of the second year, third year, they've elected all their candidates and things like that. Ideally, barring any delays, mm -hmm. you are saying this could cause confusion. If I decided that, okay, I believe I'm in, and I decided that, no, yes, I came on the MPP ticket, I came on the NDC ticket, I came on the CPP ticket, but midterm, I'm not interested in them. Will the party sit and let them stay there? Eh? Do you think the party, I see Dun Ketia, will sit and let him stay there? You say, eh, you don't want to be part of us again. Is that what you're saying? Then what are you sitting there for? But the Constitution said you came on the ticket of a party. And you have decided. You have shown the intention by deciding to go somewhere else. No be so. Your constitution doesn't it say so? Mm. That you would what? Perfect. What does your constitution say? Uh, no, what is their constitution? The MPP constitution. <laughs> yes, read it for no, read it for me. Sandra, put it on the screen. Read it for me. Read it for me. What does it say? Sandra, put the MPP one. So three nine. Yes, what does it say? A member of the party, this uh -huh. MPP party, yes. who stands as an independent uh -huh. candidate against the officially elected member of the party, uh -huh. or who joins uh -huh. or declares his or his support for another political uh -huh. party, uh -huh. or for an independent candidate, uh -huh. like I did for Alain uh -huh. when the party has sponsored a candidate in a general election, uh -huh. By election, automatically uh -huh. forfeits his or her uh -huh. membership. So this one, there's, of no, the there's no point uh -huh. for and, negotiation and, 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 and to seek, this, and this to one, seek damages. Automatically, this one is it in the present or is it in the future or is it both? <coughs> Don't confuse us. It's both <coughs> automatic. <laughs> so then, oh, go to please. the high court. Oh, please. Oh. <laughs> go to the Let high court. Let me finish. All right. Like you please call. That is, that, well, no, please. please. It's okay. Please. It's okay. Let's, let's oh, conclude on this. Conclude. Sorry, I, I begin one, one last round. That is why I feel that the Supreme Court should have redirected back to the high court mm. and probably ordered Parliament to follow the principles in the Constitution and let the High Court decide whether they have exited their seat or not. So I have this one from Nani Al-Sapon. He's a regular too. You know him. But he's my very good friend. Okay. He says, ask, he says, ask the MPP lawyer. Did Nani know he need to? Okay, that's for you. Uh, or body yeah, face. Yeah, I'll be. And after, uh, and after that. that, okay. So now, what remedies are there now? What, what do we, I mean, practically, what, what does it mean, you futuristically? See, you see, first of all, Ghanaians need to understand the character of the MPP now. You understand? And need to understand that the Supreme Court, by this judgment, is helping perpetuate the new character of the MPP. The MPP right now is a threat to the rule of law. Oh, the MPP, as it stands today, is a threat to the rule of law. You can't make those now, now, why, why, why am I saying that? You see, we need to understand that the purpose of the Constitution we've taken upon ourselves is to guarantee us the rule of law. Now, one of the abiding principles of the rule of law is an abhorrence for arbitrariness. One is a support of the principle of what the certainty of the law of the law. 
That's one of the abiding principles of. And it's also against acts of capriciousness. So that the MPP, a major political institution, whose focus ought to be to build the right political culture that will sustain and guarantee for us the rule of law. Now they are saying that in spite of their constitutional provision, which says that if you support an independent candidate, mm. if you support any candidate apart from the candidate as you understand, you automatically leave their party. They said they still reserve the right, in spite of this clear term of their constitution. Automatic. In terms of the clear automaticity, they still reserve the right to do that. When my brother Jantua has conducted himself in this manner, that would necessitate forfeiture after him there, he will stay. Uh, if my learned friend, a very good friend, senior, <laughs> has done, uh, the only mistake that he went to uh, a friend, he should have come to Achimota. <laughs> <That's laughs> <what he's laughs> my very good friend. When he has conducted himself in this man manner, mm -hmm. Up for him there, they will sack him. Like they they sacked on him too and uh 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 uh, uh, uh when Alan Chamata had not even become a candidate, they they, uh, they sack them. That is an act that is capricious, that is an act that is arbitrary, that is an act that flies against everything we know and believe in as supporting or guaranteeing us the rule of law. Now what the Supreme Court is saying is that they support that arbitrariness. Mm. Because the Supreme Court, when you read the judgment again, you go to page 27, and you, your people can go to page 27. You understand? Mm. And my brother here supports my position on that. I want to go to page 27. I'm coming. I want to go to page 27. Please, you have two minutes. Wrap up. On. It says that, judgment. yes, it says an MP must vacate his seat if he leaves the party under which he was elected to join another party or become independent and seeks to remain in parliament under their new political status. You understand? Mm -hmm. That is what they are saying. Mm -hmm. Now, this now so this is a law. This law will necessitate a determination as to the membership of the MP currently. This, this because if he leaves the party, so there must be a question. Has he left the party? party or not? That question must be determined. And I'm saying that the jurisdiction to determine this question does not lie with the Supreme Court. It does not. The determination of this question is a question of fact which must be heard by the High Court. So the Supreme Court, after they've given this beautiful law, to go ahead and make a determination of that question, because that's what they did. Because they gave the release 1A, 1B, 1C, which in effect was to say that they, have not, they had not left their parties as of today. But they do not have the jurisdiction to answer that question of fact. You understand? And that's why we are saying that, one, they put themselves in this big pit when they, in the first place, held that they that their jurisdiction had properly been invoked. Okay. You understand? Because then they put themselves in that pit. Right, right, right. So what they should have done, please let me conclude on this. Okay. You, understand? you gave me just two minutes in the earlier one. I have a lot of minutes. I stand there. You see, what they should have done hmm, was to take the position the dissenting uh, uh, viewers took. Judges. The judges took. You understand? Allow the matter to go to the high, high court. court. Simple. The end per Article 131, this issue of interpretation will come up. Yeah. Then that okay. issue will be referred to that. Then you limit yourself to just the interpretation. Yeah. Then there be there'll be a burden on the high court to then apply the interpretation as you have so given. Because there's no way you can answer that question without determining whether or not they are still members of their party. You understand? Now I want to implore all Ghanaians. We when we say we have a responsibility to defend our constitution, we have a responsibility to defend the purpose of our constitution. Because the purpose of our constitution is to guarantee us the rule of law, because that's the only way where the aim and purpose and objectives of our constitution would meet. And those aims and objectives are to protect our lives, to protect our liberties, to protect our fundamental rights to pursue our happiness. Now, when you have a political party that is acting in a manner that's inimical, adverse to the rule of law, then you must understand clearly that the MPP, the MPP right now, is a threat to national security. They are a threat to the rule of law. And we must do everything in our power to ensure All that right. they do not retain you are, power. You are crying. Uh, 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 you uh, have no, no, out. no, no, please. Let us do that. No, please. You have jumped out. No, 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 please. The two of you, the two of you, please. So, 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 practically now, what is the recourse to any party? I mean, individual or political parties or such organizations in such circumstances? This ruling would create, if it has not started creating, confusion in the political parties. Mm. Because 
members of those parties would join political parties and ditch their party but still remain in those parties. Now, in the past, people were afraid to lose their seats. So, so they didn't behave in a way that would let their parties expel them. Now, it's free for all. They will do it right in your face. You can't do them nothing. No, what they call foco. You can't do them foco. And that's why they say, shake gele -ge. You can't do them foco. You can't do them foco. Now, the next thing too is that, the next thing too is that, the MPP is actually behaving like owners of the country, and what doesn't suit them, they wouldn't accept and go to the Supreme Court and get endorsement. What if the MPP is only, you know... Why am I saying this? Why am I saying seeking this? Seeking a redress What them? am I saying this? The same MPP filed a motion to remove Adjua Safo when Adjua Safo was not conducting herself to their benefit. Everything is about their benefit, though. Everything. So when you file that motion, not to the Supreme Court, to the Speaker, to declare that seat vacant, if the Speaker had declared it vacant, would you have gone to court? The answer is no. Because at that time, it benefited them. That's what they want. So it's now like we are ruling. That is the whole thinking about this thing. That's it. My brother here was talking about divorce and referencing it to what we are talking about. You don't, you don't compare oranges and apples. In divorce, is there a law that says that if you file your divorce, you are deemed to have already exited the marriage? Is there a law like that? Yeah, that's There's a law. There's a law which the, says that... In the party. Not in the party. The constitution says that he, if he leaves the party of which he once was a member at the time of his election, at the time of his election, did they leave the party or not? Because I have told you here that he has left the party because you cannot pick a nomination form in any political party if you are not a member of that party. And I'm sure if the Supreme Court had taken time to allow uh, Justice Eric Joe to, because he has been a political party man, you would have told them how you can be. Because, because, because let's say Sam George. Can Sam George just go to his constituency and to, to the MPP constituency and pick a form and say, I'm going to contest? Before he does that, the MPP would have satisfied itself that Sam George has now become our member, for God's sake. You see? So, this ruling is much I do about nothing. But, because the Supreme Court and there has not been any reversal, we are bound to live by it. But I'm saying that this ruling will not stand the test of time. So, so right now, are you going to seek amendment to your constitution in the next conference? You see, before you get there, my friend, Mr. Baliba was saying that the, the um, my other friend here is saying that it is a cacophony, the judgment is rendered a cacophony, and there's going to be confusion in the parties. It's the same Supreme Court presided over by his lordship, the Zatukuba, who in the Zanato case, all right, said that because the higher court had not referred the matter to the Supreme Court. All right, it, they are wrong, and he said here. Listen, as as the court, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. As because they were very, they, they were varying. They, 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 they were, they were, no, no, no. You see, when when yeah. you make your, there's no comparison. When you make your 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 submission, your what, is, what is the comparison? Yeah. All right, yes. please, please allow, I allow to you to submission. flow. Yeah. Let those who are listening to us oh, know yeah, whether it is true or not. Yeah. Okay, it says as the court failed to do this here, we as the court failed to do that. This court hereby so motto, that's so, 
And then it goes on to now determine the matter. It didn't go back to the High Court anymore. So this is not the only time that the Supreme Court would now look at the facts of the matter and make a determination to bring clarity and solve a problem. Was, it, was that case in the Supreme Court already? I have the question. Question. Well, I'm the saying that a matter was sent to the Supreme Court by the analogy when they determined, when they gave the interpretation, you're saying that by necessary consequence of that, it must be reverted back to the High Court. Now, I'm saying the Supreme Court has not always done so. And the Supreme Court is guided by bringing clarity to a matter going forward. This is how, when this matter happens, comes. This is how it is dealt with. Now, your matter about an internal party thing. Why is it that now we have my brother here, who I want back, <laughs> and I'm still working on it. <laughs> I'm still working on it for you to come back. Of course, I know, but <laughs> you will come back. <laughs> All right? And my brother Maliba here. Hey, my senior brother here, uh, uh, I've been yeah. in advance. Mm -hmm. To not be so interested in MP MPP internal matters that they are now interpreting the constitution of MPP, which is subservient to a constitutional instrument, equally subservient to an act of parliament, let alone the constitution, and seeking to superimpose that upon the constitution. It doesn't even arise. But please, you please, no. my, let, my question let, is let your party... My, let a party. My question, let a party my question is premised on how the judgments of the Supreme Court also yes. affect other individual organizations and individuals exactly. in relation to the actions they have to take thereof. Right. That's why. Right. So let a party, okay, take the decisions they see appropriate. It could be that they won't take any action in respect of the Constitution. It, it could be that they will take action in respect of the Constitution. Let a party. Have make, a sober reflection make that of how things are done. As I said, we are even. Didn't you see the picture flying about? Uh, <laughs> Annabu Afanyo Markin and Annabu Kene uh, 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 mm. with uh, Cynthia Morrison. And then whatever we were seeking to do was scuttled because already the press took it out that, oh, she's agreed to come back. And, and you know, when we are in the process, you already say that it scuttles it. All right. And so there are several discussions behind the scenes and several things that. As a party that thinks about the nation, Ghana, as a party that thinks about just one vote, because this election is so crucial that we just need one vote. The last time it was 23,000, isn't it? That's now we're 18 million, 700 and something, and we need just one vote. And it's so crucial. So it's not for us to now be driving people away from us, and because we are not doing so, then someone says someone says there's double standardness and there's capriciousness. No, it is not, because we need you. I need your vote. You, Mr. Maliba. Then you said if uh, Sam John decides to come, we will so welcome him. We will so no, welcome no, 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 anyone. I'm not trivializing the issues. I'm not anyone. Anyone who wants to join, and that's what we are doing. So we will not take steps that will drive people away, and that is not capricious. It is not. It is not what the parties think the law is. So seeing Morrison, Afenyo Markin together doesn't mean that she has not left the party. It is the law that would, you know, deal with your conduct and say that by so doing. So no amount of thousands of pictures. He can even go and snap pictures of Kufu. That doesn't make her remain in the party. Did she cross or she has not crossed? The answer is that. In that constituency, she's even campaigning against the MPP there. But it changed. And the NDC is campaigning says, for her. Is that not so? Oh, but but, but yeah, he says yeah, that they, they, they determined yeah? that. He says they How did they determine that? I have seen the NDC campaign for Morris. Conclude on this. I, I, I cannot go and pick a nomination form from the NDC without joining them. Impossible. They'll be the first people who pick up a phone and say, Janta, what are you doing? Are you part of our party? Cannot do that. Nor can I do that with the MPP. Nor can I do that with movement. The Supreme Court has made a decision. For me, what I want to happen, let sleeping dogs lie. There are important bills in Parliament that need to be passed before Parliament rises. And for me, one of the major bills that we all need to have consideration for is the temporary budget for uh, handing first over quarter. the first quarter. 
That is important. So, I plead with the speaker. I will plead with the speaker. Let's let let's let sleeping dogs lie. The the body language of the Supreme Court judges themselves. You saw that they looked a bit perturbed and fed up of what was going on. So, let's let sleeping dogs lie. Let parliamentary open. And NDC, I beg, you've made your point. You've made your point. Ghanaians who will support you will support you. Ghanaians who won't support you won't support you. Please, go back to your seats and let parliament work. At least for the few days we have left for parliament to sit. Because we were supposed to rise yesterday, wasn't it? November 14th, if I'm not mistaken. They would have to come back again when? After elections. <coughs> and if elections go second round, eh, would they be able to come back? They won't. Short time. So please, I would say, Parliament is an important institution in this country. Parliament is an institution that handles legislative laws for our country. And there are legislative laws that need to be passed and heard. So, I beg, Mr. Speaker, call par recall Parliament. And you see, the other thing that the political party shouldn't do, they shouldn't now, MPP shouldn't now walk into Parliament and be shouting, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it is not important. Why not? Why should it be? Yeah, we've won against you, we've won against That riles a lot of, of, of dissension. It riles a lot of dissension. If Suka calls and he says, go sit your seat, go sit your seat, let it go. For me, I hang parliament. The sitting for me is not important. 137, 137 plus one. For me, it's neither here or there where you sit. If you had majority, maybe so. It's hung. And the NDC cannot call government business, can they? Even if they say they are majority, can they call government business? They can't. All right. So let's stop all this kafafo. It's gone through the process. You, you said we should stop what? All the kafafo. Kafafo. Yes. Let's all stop right. it and Thank let's you move forward. Much. Thank you very much, gentlemen. A very, a very distinguished English man. So he uses such words. Ka 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 kafafo. Ka 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 well, so. Well, so we, we're also going to bring you um, what Maha Beach Resort are calling the beachy tidings and sandy joy this Christmas. So they're telling you to book two nights and get the third night free with all meals inclusive, starting from 6,000 Ghana cities for a couple. So the package offering guests free access to all in-house facilities, swimming pools. That will be a gym, a cinema with popcorn, board games all available, snooker and then entertainment. You also get to enjoy free airport pickups. That is when you arrive uh, from Takradi on weekends. Fun activities will include tour of the beautiful facility they have with a golf cart, splash playground for kids, bouncy castles, trampolines, bicycle rides, uh, quid bike rides, as well as boat rides to the famous Maha village, jet skis also available, banana boats, a party bus ride, nightclub with available live band, uh, night DJs, and then also brass band all available. They also have a famous itinerary on the trip, which is uh, a trip to Nzulesu, Port Apollonia, Ankasa Forest, and then a memorial home of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. So to ensure that you do this, make sure you book and pay before the 1st of December and enjoy that extra 10% discounts they have for this pricing. And then you can also call them for further reservations to avoid any disappointment through the number 030-3977-773 or 050-157-0684. You can also email them, sm at maharesort.com, or you can also get onto their social media um, handles as well as their website, maharesort.com, which is a paradise found under the palm trees. Till Christmas. <laughs> great one. I know the great um, rich lawyers around here will also take part as well. But we have cash out, uh, and today is a mega jackpot. So we want to start off with some uh, great insights where we're getting our first um, draw. 5,000 Ghana cities is going to be giving right now. We'll, we'll call the, the, the lucky winner. Already over 50 people have enjoy, enjoyed 200 Ghana cities, and those ones we don't 
is then announced those ones. So this one, the first one, we're incrementally going to increase this as well. 5,000 Ghana cities to the number 0247781. Please make sure star 439 has chosen option 8 becomes the option for you and then become a great winner this morning. We'll take a break. We'll be right back.